is growing. Panorama reported that in the first quarter of this year, 69 home care companies went bust. And, um, well, I can give you more statistics about that. But the pattern is, according to the directors of health social services, residential care homes are closing at an unprecedented rate. Hospitals are log jammed with elderly patients with nowhere to go. In the community, local, local authority cuts are leaving more than a million people desperately in need of more assistance in their homes. And of course, again, that fall in the number of companies is most severe in the poorer part of the country. In fact, the Quality Care Quality Commission says there are 40 national providers that are so big that if they fail, um, it will be impossible to replace them. So, you know, they've really got um, uh, a, a, you know, a, a vice like grip over uh, social care provision. So, what can we do about it? Well, the Labour Party manifesto offers some hope. Uh, because it says we want a national care service like we have a national health service. And I think that's the right framework in which to think about different policies. And the first thing that they promise is they will inject more money. A further eight billion over the lifetime of the next parliament, an extra one billion for the first year. That will enable providers to pay the living wage without cutting the quality of care. They also say, we want a much more joined up service, because it's a real problem, the NHS over here, the social care service over here, you know, I gave an example a minute ago about what happens to people trying to get out of hospital into care. Uh, there's a big problem in Birmingham for that problem, one of the worst places in the country uh, for that problem. And, yeah, I'm coming to the end there, okay. Um, so, an integrated system, a fully funded system, it's certainly a system that needs a proper training uh, route for staff, but they get good training from the moment they um, start getting employed and there's proper progression. Uh, you could start by making it mandatory, the existing apprenticeship schemes in social care, they're not mandatory at present. But the question remains, what do we do with those big providers that dominate the system? Because more funding from a Labour government simply runs the risk of just making them more profitable again. And so there's a real challenge, and I think it's a challenge for the trade union movement to think through what uh, a different, better form of provision might be. Um, and there is some interesting evidence from the Care Quality Commission, which basically says the highest performing care providers were those that had the most personalized care, where people are at the center, which is obvious, isn't it? Um, and community care providers were rated the highest. Smaller care homes were rated better than larger ones. This is rated by people who are uh, uh, um, who are carrying out the national survey of all this. Um, so, there is a model there, isn't there, of small, locally based, community based care provision, but clearly strongly regulated by local authorities. And I think it's a discussion we have to have. It's not just a question of more money, it's a question of a failed market system. And um, there is an interesting pamphlet, this is the front page, that's just come out from um, localised West Midlands and the New Economics Foundation. Now I don't agree with a lot they say, because they're into transfer of assets from councils to communities and so forth. But I do think they've got some interesting ideas about how councils councils can use their capacity for procurement to, to move contracts from big companies to support small ones that they approve of and to encourage the growth of those smaller community-based ones. So I leave you with that. That's the picture. It's a really grim one. 
both in children's care in the city, the, the children's centres, but in particular with adult care because it is so difficult to campaign around it. Although if we hear of the place closing in uh, Birmingham, we should do something about it. But in the meantime, it's that part of the iceberg that's under the surface that's a challenge for us to think about how to address it. Well done. Any questions, uh, Richard? Yeah, um, first one there. Thank you, Richard. Um, a, a, a very good overview. Uh, I, I just want to say a couple of things. Um, first of all, on children's care. Um, CGL, the company I work for, um, bid for the, uh, the uh, health business mo- um, management contract uh, in the new... Uh, in the new um, New world of children's services in Birmingham. Thankfully, I didn't get it, get it because um, she's an appalling, and it's a, it's a, it is an NHS trust that's doing it. But um, it's a, a foretaste of things to come if we don't change this public government. Um, the centre premises. I've got real concerns, and I'm not sure um, if it's been really touched upon or, or very well widely publicised, but. The centre, the centre premises are often owned by the very trust that's dis- determining which ones are going to stay open and which ones aren't. Um, and I think there's a real conflict of interest there. There are big gaps as a result of um, the the proposed closures. Um, and actually, um, for example, they're pl- looking at closing the one. Um, on Bristol Road, just opposite where the uh, McDonald's is, they're looking at closing that uh, children's centre, which is a huge gap in, in southern Ladywood and northern Edgbaston, where there's some real, um, really uh, uh, high need for, for the children's centres. Parents in crisis are not going to want to take two buses to, to, to find a, a worker. Neither are they going to want to stay on hold on a, on a, on a phone system which tells them to press one if they want to kill their child or two if they want to kill themselves and wait 30 minutes for someone to come and tell them that they'll get someone through in the back in, in two days' time. And we really do need to, uh, we really do need to, 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 to try and come against as much as possible. The trade union recognition is really important uh, and achieving. But coming on to adult social care, I'm a user of adult social care. And, and the gap is not just for the elderly. I'm 52 years old. I've got a friend who's 56 who now is being discharged from hospital with no um, care plan at all because she's expected to wait.